Hello and welcome to the virtual field day for the LSU Agricultural Center's hemp program. Uh, I'm Dr. Gerald Myers and I'm largely in charge of doing some of the variety evaluations to try to determine which lines or strains may do best in the production environment in Louisiana. Uh, to that end, and we will be seeing it in the greenhouse as well, we are currently evaluating 28 different strains of hemp, both in the field and in the greenhouse. Uh, as you may have heard from Kaylee, who is also making a, participating in this video, uh, we are looking actually in, in the greenhouse. She presented under the hoop house, which is an intermediate environment. And here we are out in the field. And if you compare what you see here to what you saw in the hoop house, you'll notice that the plants don't look quite as nice. And this is actually a problem we are seeing throughout Louisiana in terms of trying to produce hemp, be it for fiber or for CBD, uh, out in the natural environment in Louisiana. We also have um, some issues in terms of soil types, and that is also uh, making production in Louisiana a bit more difficult. And with regards to soil types, hemp tends to prefer a, a very sandy loam or a high loam soil. It does not like clay at all, and that's one of the problems we're running into here out at Central Stations in Ben-Hur, is that the soil type does not suit the production of industrial hemp uh, on, in the outdoor environment. In terms of fertility, um, this was not, we are currently fertigating this once a week, but the general rule would be if you are, think of a high yield corn crop, that's about what the level of fertility that you would like to provide for growing an industrial hemp crop. Um, as you can see, there's grass everywhere. Um, and there are various options in terms of how you lay down plastic mulch. And you can see the white plastic mulch here that Kaylee was mentioning about earlier. Uh, it does a good job of helping to keep the temperature down compared to black mulch. Black mulch heats things up. But it still is not a panacea. It's not going to solve all of your weed problems. We have real problems here with nuts edge growing through the mulch. And you can see a, um, a whole cornucopia of weeds out here that are attacking hemp, which makes the labor requirements so heavy for this crop. There is a lot of hand weeding involved. and um, it's an intensive crop to be growing. In terms of hemp varieties, one of the issues we have actually in the South is that most of these are not developed in the, have been developed from the South. This line that I have here is actually from Oregon. And it is about ready to harvest. It has been growing in the field just over two months. And we'll be getting ready to be harvest this in about two to three weeks once these trichomes finish developing. As I mentioned previously, one of the varieties we are evaluating out here in the field in the greenhouse is actually from Oregon. And this is, as I mentioned, a problem that we have is that this material is not adapted to our photo periods that we have down here as well. But in addition to that, there are other things to be looking for in terms of CBD or industrial hemp strains. This particular line is actually a seedless line, so it will not produce seed. There are also lines, this is produced by, by a process called feminization. There's also another type of seedless CBD lines that are produced that actually make use of triploids, crossing a diploid hemp line with a tetraploid, diplo, tetraploid line, and the triploid is resulting sterile, much like uh, seedless watermelons are. In addition, we also have the photoperiod sensitive types, and we also have lines in here that are called auto flowering, which will grow vegetatively for about two months and then will automatically start to go into the flowering stage regardless of the amount of light that they receive. 